This is Twit. We've not mentioned the anthem breach, which is chilling because of not only the size, but the scope of what was leaked. Um, the good news is that Anthem, from all reports, did respond very well. I mean, maybe this is the, the uh, uh, while, while it's bad that we've had a breach of this scope and magnitude, and I'll discuss that in a second, they, they themselves detected it rather than, as normally happens, some third party sees like credentials appearing on the internet and says, eh, by the way, you know, I mean, normally Home Depot and Target found out about these things when, when, when it became clear that the common thread among fraud was that everybody had shopped recently at Home Depot. Well, this is so, so this is way better than that. This is Anthem's own internal security monitoring found the problem. The bad news is that apparently the first malicious access to Anthem's internal subscriber, you know, insurance subscriber database was December 10th. And they first became aware of the suspicious activity on January 27th. So the bad guys were in there apparently exfiltrating data for some length of time. Um, and the the data that was ex exfiltrated is, of course, the the real crux of this problem. Well, and the thing that bothers me is it wasn't encrypted at all, right? Right. What? Right. right. <laughs> That's terrible. By, by, by their own admission, uh, they said that it was it was not encrypted in its database. They also did a little sort of mealy mouthing, saying, "Well, additional encryption would not have thwarted the acts the attack." because an administrator's credentials were compromised and security protocols were bypassed. So they're saying, well, okay, but it wouldn't have mattered. At, at the same time, it's like, well, maybe in this case, but it, you, that's not an excuse for not encrypting your database because, the, you know, a, a simpler form of attack might have just been able to exfiltrate the database, in which case they would have gotten nothing. So, you know, you know clearly... Clearly, this demonstrates that that they're still not behaving. And remember, this is not Anthem's first problem. They had problems a couple of years ago that we talked about on the podcast, a, a much smaller security problem. But it came to light then they were not encrypting. And now we know they're still not. So that's certainly a problem. Didn't but, learn their lesson. Uh, names, dates of birth, members' IDs, Social security numbers, residential addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and in some cases, employment information, including members' incomes. So what we're looking at there is the mother load. It is, it is you couldn't ask for more for identity fraud. And that, that's, of course, the problem is, is, is identity theft. Uh, people creating new accounts under under fraudulent credentials and social security numbers and residential addresses. That's th this essentially is is everything you need in order to impersonate somebody and and get credit under their name. So, you know, and of course, yes, they're they're and 80 million subscribers. If I didn't mention that number before 80 million. Anthem, of course, is big in California. They have 37 million subscribers in California alone. Um, and and this, this is across their various properties. Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Uh, uh, I guess Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Georgia, which is a separate group. Uh, Empire, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Amerigroup, Caremore, Unicare, HealthLink and DCare. I'd be so furious if I were a customer. Because yeah. and the real problem is you cannot change a social security number. Right. It's not right. like a credit card number where you can say, oh, federal government, give me a new one. So well, yeah. You have this the rest of your life now. You have this so hanging over your head. There is no remediation. Yes. And with a credit card, 
Um, that's all that's been compromised. And so while, yes, you're then a you're subject to credit card fraud until you but but of, of which you're in, indemnified from. We've all heard the horror stories of what happens with identity theft. I mean, people people's lives are turned upside down and it's very difficult to 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 recover from. I mean, it, yeah, as you said, Leo, it is it is really bad. Now, we have to fix this social security issue because uh, I mean. First of all, the Social Security folks say don't use your Social Security number as an identifi as identification. identification. And right. yet, the, everybody has it. If you apply for credit, you have to give them your Social Security number. That's what we're being asked for. Yes. Which means that there's you had no recourse. If you want health care, if you want a car loan, if you want a credit card, you're going to give your Social Security number to people who do a crap job of protecting it. Right. And oftentimes it's, you know, uh, I know in some cases, I think I'm trying to think if it, if it was something I did with Verizon a while ago. I, I, I have my my cell phone account through GRC. So we use our corporate tax ID. But had it not been that they wanted my Social Security number. I mean, that's my tax identification number. So, um <laughs> I think they need it. We need two numbers. We need it needs to be like private key crypto. You need a public number and a private number or something. Like sort of like a one-way function. So yeah. you cannot you can't sort of like a hash of your social security number so that somebody could verify that you know your social security number if they know it, you could prove yourself that way by just hashing it and then say okay, here's the hash. Um, but not be able to go the other direction. If you can prove, I'm reading the uh, documentation on the uh, uh, ssa.gov website. If you want to change your social security number, you can in some very specific cases. But one of them is if you've been a victim of identity theft and you continue to be disadvantaged by using the original number. So, But you, ha you can't just change it because you want to. You have to prove... That you've you it has to be all after the after the fact horses left the barn it's sad too because i memorized mine when i was 16 or something you know whenever i got when the, you know, when i got it and i love my number it's like it's been in my head ever since and it would be a shame to to have to change it mm. they they uh anthem did bring in an outside security firm mandiant uh that is a, a well-known um, sort of inspector of these things, and they got you know thumbs up from from the guy who was who was uh, interviewed by several third parties, saying, "Well, what do you think of the job they did?" Um, and uh, th this guy Dave D'Amato is the managing director of Mandian, who said that uh, immediately after Anthem noticed the incident. They reset some passwords and performed a series of actions to remove the attacker from the environment. Any passwords that were affected by the breach were reset, and they began blocking traffic associated with the attacker and removing any compromised systems from their network. So, oh, and it was a sophisticated attack. Apparently, some custom, um, never before seen backdoors were inserted into the network somehow. And it does sound like uh, an administrator's credentials were compromised. So, you know, this was a. The, this was a deliberate focused attack. Um, we have to learn as as we're finding out how to do better. Um, you know, there needs to be better, better protection. Uh, and boy, you're uh, right, Leo. I mean, this is this is, you know, devastating for 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 customers of of Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield and of the other properties, you know, about half of whom are here in California. They are uh, already seeing um, phishing attacks. Uh yeah. With the Anthem logo, an email from somebody pretending to be Anthem saying, hey, we had this problem. We better log in. <laughs> Change Click stuff. this. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're an Anthem customer and you now, congratulations, uh, you need to know a lot about protecting your uh, good credit. You need to know how to file a fraud alert. You need to know how to check your credit report regularly. I mean, welcome. Yeah. In fact, probably yeah, we should they, all be doing this. But they they did set up something called AnthemFacts.com, dot com, uh, A N T H E M F A C T S dot com, 
And it was a little unimpressive. There's someone named Joe who runs Anthem, and he signed his he signed him his name with a big happy Joe, and noted in there that he too was a victim, meaning that he was one of the 80 million. It's like, well, okay, Joe, that doesn't sure. Really all make the sense. Anthem employees were <laughs> Anthem customers, yes. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that aye, doesn't aye, really aye, help aye, me. Yay! Yeah, uh, 80 million people. Wow, boy, hackers are just gonna have a field day. Yeah, it's not. It's not yeah. good.